So how do you know that it's not encryption that you're doing on purpose on your own system? One of the things when we talk to our partners, you know, they kind of have three requirements. You know, one is it has to be proactive. It has to catch something as quickly as possible. The second important thing is it, it has to have low false positives because if it's crying wolf all the time, it's, it's actually sometimes worse than it not flagging anything. And what you're asking is the crux of this whole solution is any machine learning model is only as good as the data that you train it on. Right? At least initially, mm -hmm. that's what we are trying to train before we let it loose in the world. And this is where working with our partners has been critical. Right, The, the first set of data that we have to train on is the malware itself. I mean, there are publicly available databases of, you know, take ransomware. There are so many variants of it. We, we take all of them. We, we are a subscriber to it, as a lot of other AV companies are. And we train the models with it. Right? The second thing we have to do, which is, uh, that, that is just to catch any new uh, variants. But the, the more important part, as you brought up, is how do we train for all the, make sure it, it discards the good applications from mm -hmm. that. So we actually do a lot of that in-house. You know, we, we run it, for instance, in, in our case, it's very close to tied to our commercial platforms, right, to the pro platforms in particular. So, so we train it on a whole ton of commercial applications that are out there that you and I would be using or other companies in general use so that it, it knows how to differentiate between the good apps and the malware. And the other important part, and this is why a partnership with our key AV vendors and EDR vendors is critical, is because they then deploy it on hundreds of millions of systems out there. And different geography running in a small company set up running an app that we would never see in our labs. Mm -hmm. But we get that data, right? We get that data working with our partners and we can we can then train our models to say, hey, you know, ignore these types of new types of attacks. Mm -hmm. So it's it's kind of a uh, you know, it's 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 a cyclic, you know, it's something that we work together with our partners so that um, it very quickly gets to the point where it's able to tell the good apps from from the bad ones. And we've trained it so that when we detect that app, and it's fairly certain, you know, it knows which process actually is running it, and it gives that handle to our partners so they can remediate. So as fast as your kind of training and designing yeah. training, um, I assume that there's bad actors out there adjusting the ransomware so that you think it's good versus bad. So how do you kind of keep track of that or keep up with it or keep ahead of it? Good point as well. And the two aspects to it, right? The first part is that's why machine learning is critical, right? We cannot be programming this, you know, as, as opposed to the standard case, you're telling it to look for a particular pattern. Here, we want it to go beyond that. We're going to train it on all the samples that we know of. That's why machine learning is critical because we are now telling it Look for other things you haven't seen yet, and and over time it it kind of learns, it it kind of detects these new samples, and every once in a while we have to go and retrain it because there may be a new variant. But but oftentimes we find that there may be a new variant that uses the same encryption algorithm that we've already trained it on. Ultimately, when that encryption algorithm gets triggered, we are able to detect it and we can flag it. And and the advantage of doing it the CPU is. Uh, you know, the typical bypass mechanism that many malware could have is it can back off. So rather than running continuously, it can run and then stop and run. The granularity of the CPU at which we are monitoring is so fine that it doesn't matter. I mean, we can detect them even if they do that. Of course, if they do it at the point where they are not encrypting at all for a long time, we have succeeded because that's, that's the whole goal of the malware is to encrypt the system. So we can stop it that way too. So that's one thing. The second part, as I said, is we do work with our partners so that when there are new variants, and we, we kind of monitor them too, but we work very closely mm -hmm. with our partners so that when there's a new variant, we can very quickly train it in case it's something that's, it's, let's say it's in, using a new encryption algorithm. We can update our models and we share it with our partners and it's an over-the-air update, so they can update it in, in minutes if they choose to.